Hello, this is going to be a demonstration of the runoff application using Vitria. First, what we want to do is we want to select our patient. We're going to left click on our patient. When you left click on your patient directly below, you're going to have an applications, results, and study tab. We want to go through and select our runoff application. You have a slide bar directly down, so if you don't see it, just use the little slide bar until you find your runoff application. I want to select that. Directly below, you're going to have your raw data series. You want to select our thin slice images, which this is the only one that we had sent across. And then down at the bottom right, we're going to select open. This is going to take us into our runoff workflow. The standard layout on the runoff application is a large 3D and three smaller NPRs on the right hand side. You have different layout options in the upper left hand corner. The first thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and have the bone removed. You have a auto bone feature on the upper left hand corner, so I want to select auto bone. Vitria is going to go through and try to segment out all of the bone and create us a bone file that's directly under in the anatomy section. It doesn't get removed to the recycle bin, it just creates us an additional folder and you can toggle this on and off by clicking the little check mark next to bone. The next thing I want to do is I want to clean this up a little bit more. Sometimes there's a lot of little fragments, little pieces that get left behind. So to get rid of that, there is a button directly next to auto bone labeled remove fragments. You can select remove fragments. And as, if you look at the 3D image, we have a bunch of blue densities now that have been highlighted. Those are what Vitria has considered a fragment. And to be considered a fragment by standard definition is it is something that is free floating and it has to be under 10 cubic centimeters to be defined as a fragment. Now you can change this number, you can hit smaller or larger, and that will either increase or decrease the size of a considered fragment. One thing just to keep in mind when doing the runoff application is sometimes people with per peripheral vascular disease, they have little breaks in the lower legs or the lower legs don't fill as well. So sometimes you can hit remove fragments and it will cut off specific vessels that you don't want removed. A little trick to get rid uh, or to keep that from happening, on the toolbar you have a trim icon. If you select the trim tool, I like to come over to my coronal image, grab the bottom yellow line, drag that above the knees. I'm then going to hit remove fragments. Let's say I'm okay with that. I'm going to add that to the recycle bin. Remove fragments will not cut anything off that it cannot see. So everything below the knees will remain intact. To open this back up, I'm just going to single left click on the little diamond. And that expands my image. And as you notice, nothing gets removed from the bottom of the legs. The next thing I want to do is I want to check to make sure that all my vessels have been included and my vessels didn't get removed from the auto bone feature. What I like to do is I like to turn on the tint NPR function under the base. Base is everything that we see on the 3D currently. So when you turn on the tint NPR in our NPR viewport, that is going to turn everything that is included in the base this reddish pink color. Now I can scroll through and see if any of my vessels are 
missing. If they are not tinted this reddish pink color, they would not be included on my 3D image. This one actually did a pretty good job. If I was missing a specific segment, you can use your grow tool, which is the vessel icon, left click and hold down, and that is going to grow in that specific segment. If I want to add that, instead of adding it to a vessel file, I want to add that back to the base file. That's going to add that, and once I do that, it turns that specific area the reddish pink color. That is just a, another way of going through and checking to make sure you have all the vessels necessary. The next thing I want to do is, let's say I want to do a vessel analysis. Halfway down the screen on the left-hand side, we have a vessel probe option and a select button directly under that. If I want to look at this leg vessel, I'm going to single left click on that vessel. Vitri is going to go through and it's going to draw a center line as far up and as far down as it can. It's going to create a curved planar reformat. This is a split vessel view. It's going to have 90 degree apart images. Directly below, you have a slide bar. To rotate around, you just left click and drag this bar and it rotates around that entire vessel. Directly above the curved planar reformat, you have a transaxial slice. The transaxial slice corresponds to where this little blue hash in the center of the curved planar reformat intersects. You can also see this little blue dot on the 3D image that is also showing us where we're located. You can scroll your mouse wheel to go up and down or you have a slide bar directly to the right of that curved planar viewport and we can go up and down in a transaxial view. There's a couple of different view options. So if you do not like the split vessel view, there's a little red line down to the bottom right of the curved planar viewport. You can toggle through a single view. You can have a straightened out vessel view with his histogram directly next to it. And then you're back to your split vessel view. One option that you have under the single vessel view is I can rename my vessel. So I want to, let's just say I'm going to name that right leg. I'm going to hit OK. You have the option of right clicking in the curved planar viewport and you can create a batch rotation. That's going to rotate around that vessel 360 degrees. That will save that to the study list. To toggle off the curved planar reformat, on the left-hand side of the screen, you have a button that says Show Vessel. By unchecking that, you can turn off show vessel, checking it back on will bring back your curved planar reformat. The next thing I want to do is I want to create a batch rotation. On the upper left hand corner you have a batch tab. I'm going to select full 360 degree rotation. I have a globe and an arrow directly to the right of that and I can select which direction I want the image to rotate. Down below, I can change my step size or the number of images by dragging the little slide bar or clicking in the box itself and typing in a number. I can select a series description. Say I want to name it 3D Rotate. And then I want to select Batch. 
that's going to rotate that 360 degrees. If I would like to create a MIP image, a quick way is on the right hand side, down at the bottom right, where it says volume render, left click volume render, and then I can change that to a MIP image. I have a full 360 degree rotation, 10 degrees turn. This time I'm going to name it MIP spin. Select batch, and that's going to rotate my 3D image again. I'm going to come back to analysis. Anytime I do a workflow, I always like to take a snapshot to save my work. Or if you find something you want to document, each individual viewport has its own camera. That will take that specific viewport. Or you have a camera on the very top toolbar that will save the entire screen. I'm going to take a picture and I'm going to X out so I can send my images. In the study list, I want to come back to results. My picture is indicated by a little arrow. Anything with an arrow is a restorable snapshot. I have my curved planary format and my two batches that I created. I want to hold down control, select on all three, right click, export. You're going to have a PAX destination already pre selected, and then you're going to hit export one last time. And that is a demonstration of the runoff application.